together growing in faith, changing communities. Together growing in faith, changing communities. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, dear friends, I'd like us to reflect to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. At that time, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I do not know a man? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your kinswoman Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. It's a beautiful story. Interesting story. Confusing story. A story filled with emotions. You, 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 you listen to this story from the Gospel of Luke. It's so different from the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew, the angel speaks to Joseph. In the Gospel of Luke, the angel speaks to Mary. And she goes to Mary, and the opening lines for me, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. Whatever you're going through, do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. I do not know how life has been for you. I do not know what you're struggling with. I do not know what you're longing for. I do not know what you've been praying for. But I just want to remind you today, you have found favor with God. God has looked upon you with favor. There's no need to be afraid. There's no need to panic. There's no need to walk away. God has a plan. Sometimes God's plans may disturb our lives. As we grow up, we have visions, we have plans, we have things that we want to accomplish. And we have a time frame. We tell ourselves by this time, I want to have achieved X, Y, and Z. And sometimes when that does not happen according to plan, we get frustrated, we get angry, we get agitated. But I just want to remind you, there's no need for that. You have found favor with God. And God will make all things new. Now, there's a second element for me. While the Lord affirms Mary, Mary is still confused and she's like, how is this going to happen? And sometimes we worry about it. I know what needs to be done. I know what I need to achieve. I know where I'm supposed to be. But the how 
beats me. I don't know how to do it. And so Mary asks the angel of the how. And the angel says, do not worry, Mary. God will take care of it. The angel will come upon you and overshadow you. And I don't think Mary understood what that actually meant in essence. I don't think so. And sometimes we don't need to have all the answers in the world. We don't need to understand everything. We don't need to solve every problem. I just need to trust God. I'm not worried about tomorrow as long as God is in my tomorrow. I'm okay. I'm not worried about what I'm going to become as long as God is part of that journey. I'm okay. I'm not worried about the future of my kids as long as God is there in the future of my kids. I'm not worried. I'm okay. Go back to the scriptures. The one who keeps the house to guard it he does that in vain if God is not part of the plan. Ours is to plan, but it does not end with the plan. It is entrusting and involving God to be part of that life. Now, that's one part of this beautiful story. The second part for me is when the angel speaks to Mary and Mary says, how would it be? And the angel explains then the angel gives evidence to Mary. Your king's woman, Elizabeth, whom everybody has been calling barren, is on the sixth month as we speak. For nothing is impossible with God. Now, God is able and capable of doing what no other human person can do. Of fulfilling what no other human person can fulfill. And God can do it. And God assures Mary that what I've said and what I've done in and through Elizabeth, I will also do it in your own life. And so Mary can only say, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. And that is for me submission. It is self-donation. It is to stand under. I do not understand, but I'm willing to stand under. I'm willing to trust God. And so too, my dear brothers and sisters, in our lives, in our families, with our children, with our future, we may not fully understand everything. We may not have all the answers. We may not have all the situations and solutions, but can I trust God? Can I trust God with my life? Can I trust God with my future? Can I trust God with the future of my kids? And that's what the Lord asks of us. Just trust me, I will see you through it. And it is absolutely amazing that as Mary negotiates with the, with the angel, she comes into a point of accepting. Does it mean she fully understands? I don't think so. But she accepts. Because God knows best. I look into my life and I go back to many times I've knocked at the doors and the doors were locked. Many times I've appealed and I was rejected. How many times has that happened to you? And yet God continues to say, keep forging on. Keep trying. Keep doing good. Keep being your best. Some days are going to be hard. Some days are going to be difficult. Some days are going to be unexplainably painful. But keep going. Keep at it. And the longer you stay, the finer the grace of God works in our lives. As long as what I do is for the glory of God, as long as what you do is for the sanctification of people, there is absolutely no need to worry. 
is absolutely no need to, to give up. But keep going and keep doing what God asks of us. And may the Virgin Mother of God continue to be with us, to protect, to bless, and to guide us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.